uh, the term language model was first coined before 1949. As far as we know, uh, Claude Shannon used the statistical language model term engrams in his book, uh, Mathematical Theory of Communication. Up until the 80s, progress in NLP was theoretical work on how to represent uh, meaning in computers. Then in the 80s, uh, tokens, uh, meaning uh, small units of a text such as words, phonemes, characters, were invented to establish a relationship in a text to be used in algorithms. Hence, uh, statistical models revolutionized the NLP in the 80s and 90s with thanks to machine learning algorithms and increased computational power. Then the deep learning era started in the 2000s uh, with the usage of neural networks in language modeling. In 2001, the first language model with a neural network was proposed. It consisted only one hidden layer. I would say it's hardly a network though. In 2008, multitasking learning, uh, meaning multiple learning tasks are solved at the same time, was adapted in NLP field. These tasks include named entity tagging, uh, like person, location, object uh, of a word, uh, part of speech tagging, like uh, classification of words depending on whether they're a verb, noun, or adjective. Uh, in 2013, word embeddings were popularized. Word embedding techniques are algorithms that convert words or linguistic representations in general into mathematical representations so that machines can operate on them. Uh, examples of such techniques are uh, one-hot encoding, word to vec and Fastec. Though they were used in the very first language model back in 2001, new efficient models helped mapping large-scale trainings of lexicon. Year 2013 also marked the adoption of neural networks such as recurrent neural networks, convolutional neural networks, and recursive neural networks in NLP. RNNs were the most widely accepted, accepted neural uh, networks among them all, Due to reasons my, part will, my partner will expa explain in a few minutes. In 2014, sequence-to-sequence -sequence <laughs> models were proposed. A general end-to-end -end framework that takes sequences from one domain and translates, translates it to another sequence into another domain. This could be uh, like um, mainly machine translation and natural language generation tasks. In 2015, attention mechanism helped tackling long-range dependency problems between words in a tag. In 2017, the current state-of-the-art transformer architecture was proposed, and this led to the advent of pre-trained models the very next year. So my partner will now uh, explain what a language model is. Uh, thank you so much, Orhan. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we have um, what exactly is a language model. But before we begin, uh, I would like to share this uh, screenshot with you, which basically uh, I, I believe that this is uh, something that everybody um, has been through, that whenever you're trying to write an email, uh, the Gmail uh, auto-suggests and completes the sentence. So this is a feature uh, known as Smart Compose, which basically uses uh, language models that are used in natural language processing. So, um, so now as we have an example, uh, I believe that it will be easier for us to understand what language model is. Moving on to the next slide. Um, so what exactly is a language model? Language models are basically a core component of modern language processing, which basically uses statistical tools to predict the words from human language, as described in the previous example uh, of Smart Compose on Gmail. Natural language processing uh, based applications use language models for a variety of tasks, such as audio to text conversion, speech recognition, spell correction, and language translation, etc. Uh, another example that we are familiar with or we, we use a lot in our daily lives is uh, Alexa and Siri, which basically uses speech recognition. Um, they use automatic speech recognition by for translating the speech into text using sentiments and or intents by differentiating between the words. For example, let her or letter, but her and butter. And moving on to the next slide, we have types of language models. So the first type is a statistical language model, which basically uses um, one of the one of the examples of it using is a bidirectional model, as the name suggests, that it analyzes the text in both forward and backward direction. As and as it analyzes the text in both forward and backward direction, it is able to predict the next word with a high accuracy. But we will be focusing more on the neural language models in this presentation today, which are really complicated as compared to the statistical models as they are based on neural network. Uh, so in order to understand what a neural language model is, we should have an understanding of neural networks. And for that, we will start with uh, recurrent 
neural networks that are uh, RNNs. So an RN, RNN is quite efficient at modeling data where it finds a sequence. And a sequence uh, can be found in a text or in a word. For example, if there is a sentence, it is a sequence of words. And if it's a word, then it is a sequence of characters. So it is usually used in speech recognition and language translations. But how exactly does it work? So it basically uh, uses a very similar concept with sequential memory, which is in human. So in order to understand what a sequential memory is, we uh, there is an exercise that we can perform. So let's say if somebody asks you to uh, read the alphabets in your head from A to Z, you will be able to read them uh, without any worries because there will be a rec there will be a pattern to recognize. However, if the same task is given to you, but with the condition that you have to read the alphabets in the reverse order, you won't be able to do that because there is no rec no pattern to recognize. Or if somebody gives you a random a random um, alphabet and asks you to continue it from there till this till the end, you might have some struggle with the first two or three alphabets, but you will be able to uh, able uh, you will be able to recognize the pattern again, and it will be an easier task for you. So this is something which is known as sequential memory found in humans, and there is a con this and there is a concept very similar to this, which a recurrent neural network basically. Uses. Moving on to the architecture of uh, RNNs, we have on the right hand side a feed forward neural network, which basically has an input, a hidden state, and an output. Most of the work is done in the hidden state. And if you put a loop in the um, feed forward neural network, uh, in the hidden state of the uh, feed forward neural network, you will uh, be able to pass the previous information and you will be able to affect it in a way you want. So this is how uh, an RNN um, is able to recognize and the patterns and predict the words. This is the exact same thing that I have already discussed in the previous slide. So moving on to the next slide, we have an example. So let's say you want to build a program where you want it to understand what you say or ask and respond correctly. Whatever you want to ask or say has a sequence. So each word is fed to the RNN one by one where it gets encoded into numbers because machines understand words. This, this all happens in the hidden state, which tends to keep information from the previous steps as well as, uh, as, uh, as well. So once you pass to the let's say a uh, third word, it will have information about the first and the second word as well. It, uh, the visual example of this is in the next slide, as you can see that there is a sentence, what time is it, question mark. Um, the sequence is fed to the hidden state one by one as the as the words are encoded in colors. And the, the circle right here is the hidden state. And the numbers over there are the encoded versions of the text that you see below the Circle. So what exactly are the disadvantages of it though? So the disadvantage of the RNN is that it does it cannot work with long sequences as it happens to have a short-term memory. So when it processes a lot of uh, when it processes a lot of um, words, um, it tends to have difficulty remembering the first first uh, words, as you can see in the last circle as well. So um, in the last circle, there, you, there is an odd distribution of colors. And as you can see that the blue and the green colors are very sm uh, small in distribution, meaning that it has difficulty remembering the words that what uh, the words, what in time. So it has to predict the, the output uh, depending on is it and a question mark, which is quite ambiguous. So what exactly is the problem and how it occurs? So there is a concept called vanishing gradient problem, which is uh, found um, when you're training the model. What happens is that you forward pass a prediction. And when the, when the, when you forward pass a prediction, it, it, you compare the prediction with the truth value and then using a loss function, which gives you an error. So you use that error to, to make it learn using back propagation, which basically allows you to build up a gradient which shrinks as you go as as you reach the bottom of the layer as, and the, uh, and in the bottom of the layer you have the early words or early words uh, like in the example uh, we have like what is so as it shrinks the the vanish the gradient shrinks it has difficulty in remembering those words which leads to the short term memory in order to uh, in order to tackle this problem we have another model named as lstm which is long short term memory it basically keeps all the relevant information and forgets the 
uh, irrelevant information to make predictions. It, you, it does it by using gates like forget gate, input gate, and output, as these gates have functions like sigmoid function and tan each, which I will be explaining in the next slide. So in the next slide, we have LSTM architecture. In the architecture, we have a cell state. A cell state is the memory of networks. It carries the current, previous, and the new information in it. If you look at the most left-hand side of the uh, architecture, you will be able to see that there is a forget gate, which has a sigmoid function. The red functions are the sigmoid functions and the blue functions are the damage. So a sigmoid function does is, what a sigmoid function does is that it uh, adjusts the value of the uh, previous word or a new input to either zero or one. Zero meaning that it, for, it uh, forgets the word and one means that it tends to keep the word. So this is the basic functionality of a forget gate. After that, we have an input gate which has a sigmoid function, which does the exact same thing as the forget gate, but it tends to do that with the 10H function, which basically squeezes the value between minus one and positive one of the previous hidden state and new state. So it will either keep the new, it will either keep the input or it will tend to, uh, it will either change the input or it will tend to keep the input same. After that, we have the output gate, which basically decides the new hidden state or the hidden state uh, for the next uh, cycle. So it basically works in a cycle. As you can see that the, this, this arrow uh, leads to the new hidden state and this arrow leads to the new cell state, which basically carries back to this, these sides, and this is a cycle which repeats itself. Um, the, um, uh, the LSTM, again, has some improvement over it, which are basically GRUs or gated recurrent units, which are basically quite modern to LSTMs and are a new generation of RNNs. They have fewer gates, thus they are faster to train the LST. It is faster to train the LSTMs as their functionality is very similar to LSTMs. You have quite nothing to lose and a lot to gain because it will be easier and faster for you to train the model. And it does only have a couple of differences in the architecture. So in the architecture, we don't have cell state and the hidden state is used to transfer the information. And uh, in the LSTMs, we had three gates, but over here we have just two gates. One is the reset gate and the other is the update gate. An update gate is basically a combination of the um, forget gate and the input gate. So it either forgets the input or it uh, either it forgets the input or it updates or uh, keeps the information exactly the same. And the reset gate, on the other hand, decides how much of the past information needs to be forgotten. And this all then goes and goes and gets added into the new hidden state, which again cycles back to the uh, GRU architecture. Now, uh, now I would like Orhun to explain uh, about the transformer model language, uh, transformer language models. Uh, thank you, Omer. Um, what are transformer networks? Uh, transformer is a deep learning model that adopts the mechanism of self-attention. Uh, what is self-attention? Self-attention means how relevant is the ith words in the text to the other words in the same text. It is used primarily in the fields of natural language processing and computer vision. Transformers are designed to process sequential input data such as text, audio, and video clips, just like RNN. However, Transformers process the entire input all at once, thus it is not a Markovian model. This allows room for parallelization of the training procedure, improving training time compared to other concurrent data processors. The model was fir first proposed in 2017 by Google. The additional training parallelization allows uh, training on larger data sets, leading to the development of pre-trained models such as Google's BERT um, and uh, OpenAI's GPT and Facebook's Wave2Vec and many more. Uh, moving on to the next slide, um, just like early sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, transformers adopt encoder-decoder architecture. Transformers, however, can be used in vector to sequence uh, models such as natural language generation task where the input is image matrices and the output is text and also sequence to vector models uh, uh, such as sentiment analysis task where text streams are inputs and output vectors are uh, just vectors indicating sentiments. Uh, encoder is composed of four main components. Uh, moving on to the next slide, I'll, I'll tell you what those um, components are. So first, um, the input is uh, embedded in, an, in the input embedding layer. And the input is just input indices, a number assigned to the word from the lexicon. Then the inputs are embedded into embedding space, as you can see in the 
uh, image in the left. A space where every word in the lexicon is embedded in a point semantically close, words are closer to each other in the embedding space. The embedding space maps a word to a vector. Also, uh, the embedding space in a model can be imported from pre-trained model. And um, next, after the embeddings are done, we add positionally encoded vectors to embedded vectors before the encoder processes them. This task is not done, is not done in RNN since we feed the encoder sequentially in those models. Positional encoder outputs vectors that gives context based on position of words in sentence. Basically, we create a word vector with context to the encoder. Uh, moving on to the next slide, um, the next layer is the attention layer. In this layer, Attention vector is formed for every word in the sentence or in the text to capture the contextual relationship between the words in a text. Multi uh, part comes from the fact that every word is vectorized, so multiple attention vectors are fed to the next block. The next block is the feed forward layer. This block transforms the attention vectors from the attention layer to digestible form to be used in encoder and decoder block. The decoder functions in a similar fashion to the encoder, but an additional mechanism, attention mechanism is inserted, which instead draws relevant information from the encodings generated by the encoders. The transformer must not use the current or future output to predict an output. So the output sequence must be partially masked because if we use all outputs like words in a machine translation project, then there will be no learning. The decoder would just give the next word. The last decoder is followed by a final linear transformation and softmax layer to produce the output probabilities over the vocabulary. After each block in encoder decoder architecture, layer normalization is done. Because the sequence length, because the sequence length is unknown, in both the input and the output data. And thank you for listening. Okay, uh, I have a few questions. Thank you. I think this presentation was quite uh, impressive. I learned a lot. Um, you mentioned some of the other applications of the transformer models other than the natural uh, speech processing or text processing. Like, can you elaborate a little bit on those? For instance, open AI? Yes. Um... I think um, it's mainly used in natural language processing, but uh, some projects can be intertwined. Uh, for example, natural language generation projects, uh, they take images as inputs and they give text as out outputs. So the purpose in these projects are to just uh, use the self uh, attention or attention mechanism to uh, explain what uh, the image is actually, what is in the actually, what is in the image actually. So um, the attention mechanism helps to find the objects or um, the environment uh, that actually has a meaning in the uh, mm -hmm. process. For example, uh, if there's a dog uh, catching a Frisbee in the park, then the attention mechanism helps identify the dog, the frisbee, and uh, where the image is actually taken in. So, and then generates uh, what is uh, the, the generates the text that uh, explains the picture or the image. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How how is it used in the genomics, like the proteins synthesizing? Um. To be honest, uh, I'm not sure if they're actually used in uh, genomics, even though uh, genomics takes uh, sequential inputs, uh, mm -hmm. because the uh, output is um, uh, of, a known, uh, uh, of a known length, uh, generally uh, recurrent uh, neural networks might be chosen in that, in that field. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, transformers use uh, inputs that are uh, inputs and outputs that are both of unknown uh, sequence lengths. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Did you, did you take any classes at OZN? Um, no, I didn't, but uh, I'm taking currently Coursera uh, lessons. Oh, the deep learning AI? Yes, yes, exactly. Cool. Natural language processing specialization course. Cool. Through the program we had or like independent? Independent. Okay. How did you get the licenses? Um, I'm the using the free trials. <laughs> oh, the one I week had different then. emails. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Makes sense. <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Orhun and Umar. Uh, so I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Uh, so thank you again. And do you have any thank questions? You thank you for listening to us. Thank you for listening thank you for your attention. <laughs> okay, amazing. Um, then we can continue with the smart contracts. Guys, are you here? Yeet and Ege, right? Yes, okay. I'm here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me stop the recording.